Now we are at the venue of this year's edition of the Festival de Canção, which is the, the national selection to the Eurovision Song Contest 2011. And with me is uh, one of the participants. It's Henrik Feist. Yes. Okay, Henrik. Now um, you are participating in amongst the uh, 12, 12 finalists in the mm -hmm. show. Uh, can you tell us a bit more about your musical background? Um, well, I started with my brother uh, 29 years ago, singing. Um, and uh, we participated in 1985 in the in the song festival as well and came third. Um, sang a lot in Portugal, records, then we went to England. I did a musical theatre training in England, participated in musicals in England, and then came back to Portugal and carried on working in theatre and musicals, um, not only as an actor but then directing and choreographing as well. So what made you uh, to come back to sing at the National Selection to Eurovision? Well, I think it's the, the, the pride that, that one has knowing that you stand a chance of, of representing your country in such a national event as is the Eurovision Song Contest, in such a European event. So I think it's that um, pride that you, you know, one has of thinking I could represent um, Portugal in the Eurovision and taking our flag. Now Portugal has not won the Eurovision yet, mm -hmm. okay, so uh, what do you think is the perfect song to, nowadays to put into, into the Eurovision Song Contest from Portugal? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the wrong person to ask that because I, I think that there's no true formula to win a Eurovision Song Contest um, because I think that apart from um, there being good songs, there's also a lot of, pol um, there's a very big political side involved in, in the Eurovision Song Contest. I mean, every, everyone says it and there's no point in hiding it, as in neighboring countries always voting for the other neighboring countries. So I think that when this is itself is established as we know it happens, it's, it becomes very hard to think, okay, what is the best song to take to, to the Eurovision? Because um, what, I'm, what I may think is, a very good song someone else may think is not a good song mm -hmm. so I, I, I don't actually feel that there is a true formula for winning a Eurovision Song Contest what I do feel is that there are ways that you can leave your mark okay. in, the Eurovi in the Eurovision Song Contest and be remembered whether that remembrance will take you to victory I don't know but I do I do believe that there are ways of you doing something in the Eurovision Song Contest to be remembered by and I think that it's that that may lead you to a victory. How popular is the Eurovision Song Contest in Portugal? Um, it's been losing a lot, because mostly, mostly I think not because of RTP at all, but because I think that we have, we have three more channels here in Portugal. Um, and we didn't used to have three more channels. So everyone, when there weren't three more channels and there was just RTP1, um, everyone would focus on the festival and the Eurovision Song Contest. And now the channels spend so much more time competing with what they will show at the same time the Eurovision mm -hmm. is on that we have lost a lot of public faith in the Eurovision. I think that the press in, in itself in Portugal hasn't helped mm. in a way um, because it doesn't publicize it as much as it should. Um, th they will publicize more if Portugal will take a football team to play somewhere mm -hmm. um, in Europe or what, wherever than Portugal taking a song to sing at, in, Eurovision. at the Eurovision yeah. Song Contest. You have been to UK for quite a number of years, he told us mm -hmm. before, and uh, how did you as a Portuguese perceive Eurovision popularity in UK? Well, it's very popular, because mm -hmm. the, the, it, all, it all boils down to another factor, which is um, the, 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 the public loving their artists. Mm -hmm. um, which that happens a lot in the UK because there's a very cultural side in the UK. I mean, it, um, it, the UK is where musicals happen, where plays happen. Everyone goes either to Broadway or to the West End to mm -hmm. watch shows. And so there's a big cultural side to the UK which reflects in everything else. So obviously when there are singers going to the song festival in the UK, the public adheres to it as they would do to a show or anything because there's this love of the artist mm -hmm, side. Mm -hmm. We don't have that, unfortunately, a lot in, in, um, in Portugal. The love of our culture, the love of our artists, we've been losing that a bit. Um, okay. And this is where I think the, the, the UK and um, other countries which give a lot of input to their cultural sides could teach a lot to Portugal because we don't have that as much. We only remember our artists or anything mm -hmm. when, when they die, um, oh. which is too late. 
That's, that's true, that's true. Now, you, know, you are Portuguese and you are from which uh, area here in Portugal? I'm from Lisbon. From Lisbon, yeah. from, from, from yeah. here where the, the show is being broadcast from. Uh, now, let's come to your song. You're competing in, mm -hmm. amongst the 12 uh, fi finalists. Can you tell us a bit about the song, the name of it, which is unpronounceable for me, but you can do I'll it. I'll say it. <laughs> it's, uh, the, the song is it's, it's called Quase Voar, which means almost flying. And um, what it um, basically what the song tries to say is that um, the sea is not uh, something which divides the countries, it's something which brings countries together. Mm -hmm. And um, Portugal, even being small, every cultural bit can fit in Portugal. Every culture from other countries can mm -hmm. fit in, in Portugal. And that's basically what, what the song is about. It, the song, in terms of melody, um, evokes a lot of Portuguese trends like Fado, um, but it also um, hints at other Eastern melodies, um, Greek melodies, French melodies, Italian melodies, basically to show that we are all a part of Europe. Mm -hmm. You are a very experienced singer. Hmm. You, you told us a bit about your history, and, and, but do you have a musical idol? Somebody you're looking up and I would like to sing with like, like he does or she does or I would like to sing together with this person. I'll tell you what, I do have idols but not people I would like to sing with because I know that that would never be possible. Otherwise okay. they'd never be idols. They'd be uh, a target which I... Um, but um, if you ask me who's my idol in, in terms of, of, of um, a singer, um, I would probably have to say Tina Turner would be my top, top. Um, idol. In terms of musical theatre, which is my background, mm -hmm. um, my idol until today, because I don't think anyone else has appeared um, for me that is as good as or better than, it's uh, Judy Garland. Wow, wow, that's amazing, really amazing. Uh, one more question I have, you are going to be on the stage tonight, what is your ritual before you go on stage? Do you have any? No, I, the, the, uh, the only thing that I, I, I just shut my eyes half a minute before going on stage and think just do the, be your, the best you can um, whether you win or lose it doesn't matter it matters that you are proud of what you presented and that you did it as best as you knew how fantastic the last bit before you go can you give us a bit of your song can you sing oh, a bit oh it's singing it yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> when's this going on uh, in about, about five minutes time Okay. Um, <laughs> Vez quase a voar ou a correr, mais devagar sempre a subir. Ananana, fui como o mar pelo mundo mar deria voar. Enrique Fais, thank you very much. Thank you. And good luck. Thank you. Thank you.